Let's focus on some of the transfer news surrounding Manchester United, though, as well, Mark. We're seeing Harry Kane, a report that Manchester United have ended their interest what? in signing Kane. Mason Mount linked with a reported 50 million move to United. And David De Gea, yeah. we'll get to him in just a moment. But is it a no to Kane then, Mark? It's been a no to Kane for quite a while, to be honest. I think we've been saying it for a, quite a lot, since January now, that United were reluctant to get involved in Tottenham in terms of dealing with Daniel Levy, the whole situation of not wanting to wait until August to, to sign the player or to be told he doesn't want to go there. United really want to get a centre-forward in now. They want to get it in by the start of pre-season training, mid-July. So they don't want to be in a situation where they risk starting the season without a centre-forward. And even worse, risk getting to deadline day on the, on the 1st of September and being told by Daniel Levy, oh, you can't have him now, he's staying with us. So they just want to get themselves out of that situation. It may be a gambit, it may be a ploy to try and force Tottenham to move or, or to force Kane to move. But I think that United are wise actually to get out of that situation because it would just lead them down another saga. And we know that Man United over the years have been embroiled in transfer sagas all the way to the end of the window. And it just leads to uncertainty. Mason Mount, I think, again, they've made a move on Mason Mount and Chelsea need to sell. They need to get some money in. Mount wants to go to Manchester United or Liverpool. I think United are ahead. But United need to up the bid because at the moment, Chelsea aren't going to take what they've offered around about £40 million. And again, that could drag on quite a bit because you know Chelsea aren't going to let Man United have one of their better players for a knockdown fee. But equally... United know that Chelsea need to bring some money in. So that's a bit of a poker game. And I think, again, I don't think it'll happen very quickly. But United need to get players in, obviously. But they need to get a couple of quick deals to kind of boost the confidence of, of, of Ten Hag and the supporters. Because while the takeover rumbles on, they're going to be concerned about getting players in. Jan, is there any way you see Manchester United not going for Kane as a smart move? Well, it's smart. Uh, I'm not... I'm not going that road that they, they want to negotiate with Levy. I think that is the part of the thing. Uh, yes, it will be maybe difficult, but I think it's more, most up to, to Kane. This is a big summer for Kane. Will he stay comfortable? Will he say that if he goes this summer, it will be Levy telling him where to go. If he waits one more year, he will decide on himself. But I can't see that Manchester United somehow just noting what's going on with Carrie Kane because it's if Manchester United don't, well, two big signings, they need, they need a big owner. They have got two candidates, so somehow that's going to be sorted. And then they need a striker. They're desperate for a striker. The problem is that Bayern Munich are looking for a striker. Real Madrid are looking for a striker. And to improve the team, you need a great striker. And if we, the whole group here now sitting together, who is realistic, the striker that they can get? That is quite difficult. So I think that, that Harry Kane would still be the, the main target for me. But, but it would be for any club of these three that they will, will go after uh, that kind of quality. Manchester United, I thought that Weghorst would do a, go a job for them. I didn't think he would do brilliantly, but I thought he would do a job for them. He didn't, unfortunately. Uh, and we saw that, uh, that Manchester United was struggling with that. Uh, so they need goals. They need a number nine. There's something about the way Ten Hag is playing as well. You need that number nine to link up and get the most out of the way he wants to, wants to play. Hey, Let's continue so going down. Go on, go on, Mark. Yeah, the, the problem with Man United right now, and they've lost the art, I think, since Sir Alex Ferguson and David Gill left, they've lost the art of getting a tough deal done. They don't, Man United don't do tough deals anymore. They get easy deals done or they pay over the other players. They haven't actually got a player out of a club that the club doesn't want to sell or a player that's not willing to push. So when they signed Robin Van Persie under Sir Alex back in 2012, that was a tough deal to do. When they signed Rio Ferdinand, Dimitar Berbatov, all these players that they went to rivals to sign, tough deals to do. I can't think over the last 10 years when United have done that. They've lost the art to do it. And whether they're a bit, a bit scared of doing it because they're going to end up not getting the play, but I think that's the situation they're in with Kane. So the whole Lever thing, it is an issue for them. And I don't think they want to go down the road of spending two months waiting and being messed around. But that is the problem. They haven't got... They're not the Man United of old. They haven't got that arrogance or that confidence of Man United where they think, look, we're Man United, we're the biggest club in the world, or so they say. But they don't show it. They act like a small club in the transfer market. They're going to act like a big club and throw the weight around a little bit. So what's the latest on Mason Mountain? Are they going all out to sign him, Mark? Well, they want him, but, you know, offering a bid that's way below what Chelsea want isn't going all out, is it? It's dipping the toe in the water and hoping that Chelsea gets so desperate that they sell. So I think ultimately, I think Mason Mount will go to Man United, but I don't think it'll be, it'll be done sooner. I think United will have to up their bid quite a bit to get him. It's like when they went for Harry Maguire from Leicester initially. I think initially bid £40 million, pounds, ended up paying 80. So I don't think they'll pay 80 million for Mason Mount, but I think Chelsea wants 70. 
that's a big gap, the £30 million gap. So that won't be that won't be a quick deal. And as we've seen with Man United in the past, they tend to pay over the odds when they start panicking. So let's wait until August until they start panicking and see how much it costs then. What what does Mount add to this United side then, Mark? I think he just makes them better. I think he's not going to win you a Champions League Mason Mount, although he's won with Chelsea. I, I think that what United need to do is to, is to increase the quality all over the pitch. And I think he's better than what they've got. I think you know Christian Eriksen has been a great player, but I think we're seeing Eriksen now, fitness-wise. I don't. You know, he came back from his injury and he struggled to keep the pace for the games. Like, he, don't, he can't finish games. I think Mason Mount is a busy player in the final third. I think he will offer United goals, offer the movement. You know, bring down the average age of the midfield as well. You know, he's better than what they've got. So. I don't see a problem with that in terms of improving their options, but I think in terms of being a game-changing player, he's not that, but he is better than what they've got. Frank, is Mason Mount a better player than Christian Eriksen? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a, a tough question, and... Uh... And uh, allow me to not answer to that, but to answer to the fact <laughs> that I understand that Manchester United. <laughs> well, uh, you know, if I can, you know, I, th I think we are in a democracy, so you have the right to <laughs> ask a question. I have the right to not answer to it. But uh, what, I, what I mean is, I think Manchester United has the right to uh, and um, and and sh um, and should try to sign Mason Mann because that uh, can be good for 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 its club uh, for for their club. But I have a you know a question mark about Mason Mann. I don't know. I understand that if if you want to move for a club, it's because you think that it's a promotion. Hear me well. I'm not saying that Manchester United is at the same level as than Chelsea comparing to last season. But in, ter in terms of uh, of a club or football or what they want to achieve. I think there is only one club better than Chelsea, than Manchester United, than Arsenal, than Liverpool, it's Manchester City. And I really think that a player, if he wants to move, the player of our level, he wants to move uh, somewhere, he has to look for something better where he can get something out of it, better than if he would, he would have stayed at the club. So I don't understand the move of, I would say, let's see, Avers to Arsenal or Mount to, uh, to, uh, to Chelsea. Like, I wouldn't I would, I would understand the move from Christian Eriksen United to Chelsea, because that's the same level for me. So, um, let's, let's go to, you, to your question. I think Christian Eriksen doesn't represent a far future where Mason Mann is still very young and uh, and you can build something with him and i think eric tenag is uh, is a real real fan of mason man and mason man is of course a fantastic player uh, he has to go back to where he, who he was before but he's of course somebody you want to have in your team and I understand manchester united is try to i don't understand on manchester, on mason man's side why he wants to go there well, two things that I've learned today. One is that we don't have to talk about Harry Kane anymore because, according to Mark Ogden, that's it. Manchester United are done with Harry Kane, and so, therefore, it will not be a subject the rest of the summer, right? Incorrect. <laughs> what? Well, the second thing that I learned is that whatever question you're going to ask me next, I don't have to answer because I live in a democracy. And according to Frank, I don't have to answer questions, even though we're in a show that demands us to answer questions. So, did I see Jan, when I asked that question, go, ooh... <laughs> yeah, with, with Mason Mount to Christian Eriksen. Yeah, I think it's interesting because uh, you can't really compare them. You, you, they're a different kind of players, but it's still a big shout. And then uh, uh, Frank got his right from uh, his uh, forefathers from the revolution in France, I guess, to, to make the democracy card uh, go into, <laughs> the, <laughs> into the game. But, but what, is, what is interesting, when we now go into this summer, sometimes we've got to be a bit realistic as well, how much better these players are. Mason Mount... Uh, Frank said it right. He, he said he, he is a fantastic player. I said he was a fantastic player. Uh, but he has to, like Frank saying, he has to come back to that form that he had. If not, he won't improve Manchester United. That is, that is fact. And if we saw the list that we had here with all the, the uh, Chelsea players, the, all the players in midfield of Chelsea that maybe will leave the club in the middle of the park from Chelsea, among them, they had eight goals and 10 assists, if I count it right, and I think I did. So we are now in a, in a time when the football fans in the different clubs just get us someone in. 
Just get us something, someone in. Yeah, we don't care. Don't tell them that they will be on the bench. Don't tell us Kovacic will be on the bench or, or Mason Mount is maybe not better than Christian Eriksen. We just want players in. But the job of a manager is to see that these players will improve their team and then they will have ideas about their attitude and, and a different skill. And that's what I ood UK okay, with, with Mason Mount <laughs> and, and, and Christian Eriksen because that is kind of different kind of players. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.